anybody regularly 25, you know, 24 seven. But when you lose one that is part of your heart and soul, and that happens in a row, that is lonely somehow. It's one thing with your mate, but it's another two with the ones that life brings you and your work brings you. And when those go, that's a big chunk of your DNA. And Donna and Michelle and I, I think have uh, intermixed somewhat the DNA. I, and the I, chit chat goes all over the place. It's all over the place. I love that. Well, you were on Knott's Landing for its entire run. I know you left like before the last season. Like I did a pilot. I had a young uh, Chris Maloney, gorgeous young guy, and it was an older woman and a younger guy. I thought if I wrote a script, I couldn't get something more wonderful. And because I wanted to be the Donna, I wanted to wear the short skirts, the legs showing, the, you know, I, I wanted to own it that way. And Valine was, you know, had diminished to you know, boiling crawdads. So, and there was a rumor that this was in fact not last year, which was, I guess it would be year 12. There was a rumor that it, CBS was, was thinking of pulling the plug. So the call came in from William Morris, which was William Morris at that time, that they were, wanted to see me over at NBC, which is in Burbank, way across town from where we were filming. I filmed because Michelle was directing that episode and jumped in the car and scooted over to NBC right across the way here from where our view in the valley is. And um, I auditioned and they loved it. And they said, bring her back one more time, which I did. And they said, we'd like you to do the part. That shocked me to pieces. But then I never knew there'd be a conflict uh, in that knots in my mind, in my, and William Moore should have helped me maybe a little on this, but um, it sold. And they wanted to do the, I mean, the, the network said, let's, let's see this. And uh, we filmed it during the hi hiatus for Knots because we were wrapping season 12 on Knots. And there it was picked, you know, picked up and looked at and the whole nine yards, we did the pilot and uh, it didn't sell. And uh, that then, then they were upset and rightly so. It was uh, Leslie Moonves who was head of CBS at that time. And uh, I don't know if it's his decision or maybe David and Michael who were looking for a huge chunk off the bill for all the cast. Because by that time it was a big fat year for Gary and Val were the two first characters. So we were getting, you know, great salaries. Yeah. Not a, not a pretty picture, but I went off and did a play in uh, at La Jolla Playhouse with Des Mackinoff, who's gotten a bazillion Tonys, a brilliant show. Stana Kadic was my daughter. There were all kinds of wonderful people in this and it gave me a workout. So I did a bunch of plays and that kept my pilot light going more than my pilot light because theater is the real deal. Theater is the real deal. Did you regret that then? Like the way it all turned out or are you just one of those uh, like- No, that? I was hurt, deeply hurt that I wasn't saved in any way, in any way by either, well, people that could have made this okay, but I was hurt and it was my family and they didn't, they didn't get canceled. See, that's the other thing. Knots didn't get canceled. I thought, wait a minute, wait, what? You know, but um, no, I'm not going to lie. It, it was, it was a, a faux pas and a huge pain, but a pain in my heart. Uh, but then the year I did many other things and stretched myself and did all that. Um, um, and then sure enough, when they did know that it not, which was the next year, 14, because 13 was without me, 13's gone lucky anyway, Gemini. I wouldn't touch that. So that was on purpose. But 14, they brought me back. I directed a couple episodes, continued to do my directing, a couple episodes directing. And then I came back for the uh, final two hour, bye-bye. So I felt it, it, it still hurt my heart, but it, it came out spelling mother. <laughs> so it was yes. Okay. Do you, is it great to play a character for that long? Or is there some of that, like even now, like with Grey's Anatomy, like Ellen Pompeo is like in a reduced role this season. She's like, look. Is she reduced? She's reduced. I think it's like eight, which I, I can't even bring myself. Did she choose that or did she, did they? She, I believe she did. I believe she. Well, she's good. She could burn out because. Yeah, she, she said she's, like, I mean, she's. It was the heartbeat, isn't I mean, I don't yeah. watch 
I don't watch really any TV, which is terrible because I don't have a, I, I fly by the set whenever Jack, because we have television sets all over the house. I see it and, and, and what I really notice, and Blondie better watch this and, and learn, idiot. Everything is where it used to be glamor and makeup and all. It's the real, look real and look, you don't see a lot of over the top. You don't see Dynasty, you don't see Falcon Crest, you don't see the, those kind of women, the, that. You don't see that anymore. It's kind of bare bones. And that rather terrifies me, but it also challenges me that it says, whoa, wouldn't that be just great? I'd love to do a bag lady or Meryl Streep did a thing with Jack Nicholson and she was a bag lady, homeless. And when I go running, I had a guy say, make a question that you know, implied, was I homeless? Cause I'm not, I'm trying not to be me, John Van Ark, or, cause that is my maiden name. That's my birth name and try to be something that isn't. But what about playing something that isn't? You know, that to me. That would, would be a gift. A gift. Yeah. But a bag lady or for a while, um, Katie Seagal, I think did a biker. And I looked to her because I thought, hmm, something with boots and a, you know, uh, what do you call those really high end motorcycles? I'd have to learn to ride the damn thing, but I, I I mean, that's, for an actress, that's a, that's food. That's food, soul food. Playing against type, yeah. Yeah, really, really. Well, that's what I was thinking. Like, you know, like, cause you were there for so long. Like, I would think it's great. You know, the character, but at some point you must be on autopilot in some Well, respect. no, I never, no, I never, I never felt autopilot. That may be because all of us as actors uh, continued to find the work and find the, nugget but you know after uh, I, it was storylines more and and maybe it was autopilot that i didn't i wasn't even aware of but i always took her very seriously and i was somebody else for a while sometimes i'd bring it home with me if i'm doing a tv movie and there are a lot of people who do movies actors who stay in character and won't talk to anybody on the set or any uh crew member without staying in character because you can't laugh and scratch and make jokes and then come back and say, my baby died. You know, first, just really go full out. I don't think Sally Field was the only one I worked with that, that I could see do that. She'd be talking about tampons and when you had your last period. And then they'd say, uh, actors, uh, clapboard, let's go. And she'd be in it in a second. God love her. Never forget that. Wow. What was working with Sally Field? I mean, that must have been great. It was. We didn't pal, you know, the whole time. But if we happened to be chatting and be on the 